Hi Storytellers and welcome back to the Create a Story You Love YouTube channel. In today's video I'll be continuing part 5 of a 7 part video series on 7 steps to nail down your novel before you begin writing. And if you haven't watched the 1st, 2nd, 3rd and 4th videos I encourage you to go back and watch those videos. It'll kind of help tie everything together. In today's video we will be going on to part 5 which is brainstorm and write down details about your secondary character. Your secondary character is a best friend, the mentor, or sometimes even the frenemy, which is like a friendly enemy, um, who helps your, your hero to achieve their goal. We are going to dive in and get deeper on who your secondary character really is. But just a little uh, aside before we start um, talking about the secondary character, the ideas I share in this video series are brainstorming techniques that have helped me to write my own novels, but it's important to remember that not, that all writers are unique in their own way and what works for me might not be what works for you. And so I want to encourage you to experiment with different methods for brainstorming your own ideas and come up with a way that works best for you. But that being said, let's uh, dive into why it's important to write down de details about your secondary character. The secondary good, good character is important to your story because they help the main character to achieve their goal. The secondary character can have a variety of roles in the hero's life, uh, like mentor, best friend, frenemy, um, a character which is basically a character who appears to be a friend but is really the hero's enemy. Usually the secondary character has a different personality than the hero and has skills that the hero lacks. They usually have very strong feelings about the hero. A best friend would have very strong feelings. Um, someone who is a rival would have very strong feelings. The characters that you surround your hero with will tell us a lot about your main character. Just as it is in real life, the characters that surround your hero or heroine should be characters in their own right, but they also reflect a lot about your main character. So the, the secondary character and hero do not have to like each other, but they are usually working on the same side, pulling the story in the same direction. Uh, some examples of secondary characters would be uh, a best friend, uh, the roommate, the sidekick, the love interest, or someone even like a brother or a sister. All of these types of secondary characters can reveal different sides of the main character. For example, the mentor. A good mentor knows the main character better than they know themselves. The mentor often represents the hero or heroine's higher power or superego and holds the key to the life lesson the hero or heroine needs to learn. The great thing about a mentor character is that they are allowed to be on the nose and say exactly what it is that the hero or heroine needs to hear and um, they can talk plainly about what they want and why you know why the main character is too messed up to get what they want unless of course they follow the advice of the mentor. For example in Star Wars Luke Skywalker's first mentor was Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan was a hermit and also a war hero who taught Luke to fight and gave Luke his first lightsaber. So that was definitely a mentor for Luke Skywalker. The love interest in a romance. This secondary character generally plays a dual role. The love interest can also be the antagonist, at least in the beginning of the story, an ally or a mentor. The object of desire is very often the opposite of the hero or the heroine and therefore represents all the qualities that the main character needs to become whole. Here's an important note about creating your characters. The most important factor of all is whether your characters are interesting and believable to you because you are the first audience for the story you are telling. If you as the writer don't care about your character, you can't possibly write an interesting story about him or her. If you don't believe in a character, there's no chance you can make your reader believe in him or her either. Orson Scott Card, in his book, Characters and Viewpoint, says that caring for your characters isn't something that you decide intellectually. It's a feeling, a gut level response. So when you get an idea for character, you're either you know, interested and excited and know what you want to write about it, or you don't. And if you don't, uh, if a character or a story idea bores you, 
you can't possibly write it in a very convincing way or in, or even in an engaging way unless you find something else about the character that does interest you. So, I mean, that's interesting. Every story choice you make with your characters or even the overall theme of your story arises out of who you are at the deepest level of your soul. So every story you write shows who you are and the way you see the world around you and it, and it reveals more about you than you know about yourself. Once you have a story and characters that ring true to you, including a story that feels important and worth telling, then you don't write just to please yourself. At that point, you must use every ounce of skill you have and everything you've learned through experience to help your readers discover how important and truthful your story is, to help them understand what's going on and to bring them into the world of your story and let the events and characters unfold before their eyes, in their imagination and in their memory. So when we are creating a secondary or main character for that matter, remember character story is about a person trying to change his or her role in life. It begins at the point when the main character finds his or her present situation unbearable and sets out to change that. It ends when the character either finds a new role uh, willingly returns to his or her old role, or they become you know, hopeless that their lot in life will ever get better. At the beginning of your story, normally within the first chapter or two, we see the main character dissatisfied with something about his or her life. Often by chapter two, we are introduced to the secondary character who in some way helps the reader to understand who the main character is. For example, in a romance, if the heroine is a bubbly, outgoing character type who's dissatisfied with her boyfriend, who seems to like to manage her time and her art and flower shop, perhaps her dissatisfaction with her boyfriend causes her to break off the relationship at the beginning of the story. Next, maybe the main character comes to cry on her best friend's shoulder. This is the secondary character who is the heroine's best friend. This secondary character is the opposite of the main character. Studious, organized, intellectually smart. Not that the main character is not smart, but this one is very academic. And um, since the secondary character might be the person who is like a steadying force in the main character's life and offers lots of wisdom, uh, just like she's always done ever since they were in high school, this is this is why they have a they have a trust together they are best friends so they have a trust so they main character trusts the secondary character to speak into her life right and so these are the kinds of things that you want to bring out in your story this will help to develop not only the main character but the secondary character in the previous example we can see that the main character is dissatisfied with something about her life then we are introduced to the secondary character who helps the main character now, since this is a romance, reader would soon be expecting a hero on the scene. And maybe he would show up already, you know, uh, sometime in chapter one. And, you know, perhaps she's attracted to um, this new hero that shows up, the main character. But perhaps she wouldn't allow herself to fall in love with him as she has now set up a wall, right? Because she's already experienced too much heartache in relationships with men. So these are important things to um, bring out at the beginning of your story. Readers need to understand the main character as well as the secondary character. The character story is one that requires the full, fullest characterization, no shortcuts. Readers must understand the character in their ordinary world and in their impossible roles so that they can comprehend and hopefully, hopefully sympathize with the decisions to make changes in their lives. So I encourage you this week, ask some questions of your secondary character. What are their deepest wounds and fears? What happened in their background to cause these fears? How does your secondary character's personality create a great supporting part for your main character? And remember, choose a personality for your second character that is different to your hero. Your secondary character should complement your hero rather than competing or being a rival with them. Begin brainstorming and write down your ideas today. You can do this. And for myself, I often find it helpful to brainstorm with a pen 
and a notebook or on a whiteboard, um, somewhere where I have to do it physically. And um, I encourage you to try it and see if it helps you too. After you've done that, you'll be ready for the next video in this series. Part six is coming up next time. If in this next video, part six, we will brainstorm ideas on who the villain is. We'll, I, we'll talk about ideas on writing out the details and getting a bit of a picture of who this bad guy is, including uh, his or her backstory. And why are they going to try to stop the hero from reaching their goal? But I'll share that, what that looks like in the next video. Thanks for joining me today, and I'm excited for you as you begin your journey to write amazing stories. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe below so other new writers can find this video too. Happy writing!